Hussein ibn Ali, a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had been appointed by the Ottomans to be the Sharif of Mecca and oversee the running of the Hijaz and the Hajj pilgrimage. He could see that the Ottomans were weakening and he decided to progress his own agenda and interests. So in 1915, he initiated it, a series of correspondence between himself and the British who were based in Cairo. It was a series of letters that became known as the Hussein Makman correspondence. And it is where Hussein said or put forward that he would rebel against the Ottomans on the proviso that the British would help him and afterwards recognize him as the leader of the Arab Middle East. There was no meeting between the two people, just an exchange of letters. The British were not convinced that some Bedouins from far away in the desert riding some, riding some camels could be a help to them against an empire like the Ottomans, but they decided to run with it anyway. So they sent one of their officers to meet Hussein ibn Ali. He was called T.E. Lawrence, and later on in history he would have a whole peninsula named after him. He arrived in the Hijaz and he teamed up with the sons of Hussein bin Ali. They were called Faisal and Abdullah and they moved north with all the Bedouin tribes with them. Their target was the port city of Aqaba which was controlled by the Ottomans and it was preventing the British entry into Palestine. Hussein ibn Ali believed all the promises that were made to him by the British in the writings that he got from them from Cairo. And while his sons were moving north, the British and the French met to conclude a deal called the Sykes-Picot Agreement, which was the carve-up of the Middle East amongst themselves, and that completely contradicted the Hussein Makman correspondence. The Arabs who were rebelling against the Caliph were being double-crossed, but they didn't know it yet because the Sykes-Picot Agreement was secret. What is the reward for treachery except more treachery? Lawrence and the Bedouin tribes from the Hejaz took the Ottoman garrison at Aqaba completely by surprise and easily took the city. But Lawrence and the Arabs also wanted to stop the Ottomans from resupplying the area with soldiers and ammunition, so they decided to attack the Hijaz railway, the railway of Abdul Hamid II, and thereby if they blew it up, they would trap the Ottoman soldiers in Medina, prevent more Ottoman soldiers coming from Anatolia, and make it easier for the British to move through Palestine. In 1917, the British made another deal called the Balfour Declaration, whereby they agreed to give the Jewish people in Europe a homeland in Palestine. This completely contradicted the Hussein Makman correspondence. So now the British have three contradictory deals with three different groups of people. The Hussein Makman correspondence with the Arabs, the Sykes-Picot agreement with the French, and now the Balfour Declaration with Jewish people and meanwhile while this was happening the British army and the Bedouin Arab tribes from the Hejaz led by T.E. Lawrence soon to be known as Lawrence of Arabia were making their way through Palestine they had taken Jerusalem and they took Damascus within the British army was a number was a very high number of Indian soldiers many of whom were Muslim but unlike the Baghdad campaign where Indian Muslim soldiers switched sides and fought for the Ottomans these Indian Muslim soldiers remained loyal to the British the reason for that was because the British had promised them independence if they helped the British war effort after the war was finished Britain did not give them independence and continued to colonize India what is the reward for treachery except 
more treachery. In 1918, Enver Pasha committed thousands of troops to the Eastern Front to try and secure the war objectives that he had set for himself in 1914. Unfortunately, that front was nearly a thousand kilometers away from Constantinople and nearly a thousand kilometers away from Palestine, which meant those troops would have no chance in helping the Ottomans in the Holy Land while the British made their advance through Palestine. The British were also advancing via Greece and Thrace and actually managed to occupy Constantinople. And within 12 days of that, Enver Pasha had fled, the CUP government had resigned, and it was clear the war was over. And that's when they hauled out Mehmet V, the constitutional ceremonial caliph, who was sitting in the palace to sign the armistice and front up for the war decisions and the policy made by Enver Pasha and the CUP government. The Ottomans had ruled the Balkans for 500 years, but they had lost it due to nationalism, which was instigated by outside empires. This same nationalism was the spark which set off World War I and brought all these empires together, and the war resulted in many of these empires disappearing from the map, such as the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the traditional foe of the Ottomans, and also the Russian Empire because the Tsar had been assassinated by revolutionary forces. So both these two empires died before the sick man of Europe died. The Ottomans had lost World War I, but the Caliphate was still at large. Soon, not to be so large because of the impending treaty which the Allies were planning for Anatolia. A few years after World War I, Mehmet VI was forced to sign the Treaty of Sevres, which confirmed the loss of the Middle East to the Allies, but also stripped the Ottomans of many lands in Anatolia. Not only did these lands go to, a bit to, uh, to the British, to the French, but also some lands were due to go to the Greeks, the Italians and the Armenians. Uh, this was seen as a very, very harsh treaty and Mehmet VI became quite unpopular for signing it. But there was one man who was very keen to reverse this treaty and he would start a new war from deep inside of Anatolia to reclaim land for the Ottomans or at least that's what it seemed like at first but soon it would become clear that he actually had other ideas make sure you watch my next episode in the history of the Ottomans from Etugrul to Ataturk Salam.